Hi, I'm John Gehagen, an author, editor, and journalist who specializes in reporting on unusual inventions that failed in the marketplace despite their innovative nature. My upcoming Zoom class, When Giants Ruled the Sky, The Golden Age of Airship Travel, is based on my most recent book published by the History Press. My class, which begins on Wednesday, May 3rd at 9.30 a.m. Pacific Time, is a survey course about the history of lighter-than-air flight from its start to the age of the giant Zeppelins. But the first question you might ask is, why take a survey course about the history of airships in the first place? Well, the answer is simple. Airships were the Concorde aircraft of their day, the largest, most expensive, most technologically sophisticated aircraft that could carry their first-class passengers in unprecedented luxury at speeds that cut travel time between Europe and the United States in half compared to ocean liners of the day. For example, in 1931, the Graf Zeppelin commenced regularly scheduled passenger service between Germany and Brazil, something no other aircraft of the day could come close to achieving. And it did so with such amenities as a dining room that was wood trammeled, sorry, wood trimmed and wood paneled with wallpaper, had gourmet meals rivaling the best restaurants in Europe served by liveried waiters on China and the finest crystal. Incredibly, between 1928 and 1937, the Graf made nearly 600 flights, carrying 13 paying passengers more than a million miles without a single casualty. When the Graf's successor, the Hindenburg, began regularly scheduled passenger service between Germany and the United States in 1936, it boasted every modern convenience, including a piano made of lightweight metal in the passenger lounge. Now, I think it's safe to say that an airship is about the last place on Earth you'd expect to find a piano. But airships were so robust, they even transported cars as cargo, not to mention the pets passengers were invited to bring along. Incredibly, almost everything we know about airships is wrong. Let's take the Hindenburg, for example. Most people believe the Hindenburg's fiery demise in May 1937 killed most of her passengers and crew and spelled, spelled the end of the golden age of airship travel. But that's simply not true. Of the 97 souls aboard the Hindenburg that day, 62 or nearly two-thirds walked away from the crash unhurt. In fact, Germany remained so confident in the future of airship travel that she began flying a replacement after the Hindenburg crash only four months later. What most people don't realize is that between 1910 and 1937, German commercial airships transported tens of thousands of paying passengers millions of miles without a single passenger fatality. And they did so for over 20 years, a safety record that's unmatched by any other form of transportation. In retrospect, airships might seem like fragile dodo birds destined for distinction, but between 1900 and 1930, they consistently surpassed airplanes in terms of range, flight duration, and load carrying capacity. That's why for the first third of the 20th century, airships were seemingly everywhere, appearing over the skies of Tokyo, New York City, Washington DC, Rio de Janeiro, and even the Egyptian pyramids. Even the Empire State Building, which was the tallest building at the time, was built with an airship mooring station on her roof. And yet passenger, air, uh, passenger ships ply the ocean today while commercial airlines flourish. But the passenger airship, for all intents and purposes, is, is extinct. An explanation why is long overdue, and that's exactly what my class intends to provide. So that's a brief look at my survey on the history of lighter-than-air flight. Please join me on Zoom for four 90-minute classes beginning on Wednesday, May 3rd, at 9.30 a.m. Pacific Time, and the three Wednesdays in May after that. 
To register, visit www.ollie.berkeley.edu. I promise you, you'll not only learn something new, but I think you'll find the class very entertaining. Thanks for listening.